Okay guys, so with everything that's been going on in Utah from the shed hunting closure to uh, me not being able to call in a coyote in over a month, I figured I'd do a how-to video today on how to cook wild game ribs. I'm going to be using uh, elk ribs from Maria's elk that she killed in December, but this will work on anything from deer, elk, moose, sheep, whatever. I know a lot of you guys don't save the meat from ribs, and if you do, you don't ever take the ribs with it. You just kind of cut between the ribs and take the meat out, probably grind it. Well this, this is going to show you how to cook game ribs like pork ribs. And trust me, it's good. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pans treated. I'm going to be braising these ribs. And uh, braising's fairly simple. Um, just a little bit of oil. I have nice cast iron pans, but I don't have lids to them, so I'm going to use this sweet little pan we have here, and then uh, just a big pot, because neither one of them can fit both sets of elk ribs we have here. But anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add just a little bit of oil. You don't want a whole lot, just enough to uh, kind of get a good brown, quick fry, I guess you'd say, on the meat. I'm going to start preheating these pans, get the oil hot. Let's see here. And while that oil is getting hot, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start prepping my ribs here. So, I've got two packages. They've been out. Um, defrosting for two days, uh, a whole day in the fridge, and then um, the second day today, half a day I guess, just hanging out here on the counter. Okay, while my pans are heating up, getting the oil hot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep my ribs here. Now, just real simple, just basic cut of ribs. Got a dry rub here. I just bought it from a store. I just put it in a sweet little jar to make it look like I mixed it up. Any dry rub you want, just go to a store and you get plenty of different styles. But what I'm going to do is just uh, get a dry rub going on these ribs here. I'm just going to take a little bit and just sprinkle it. Sprinkle it around, kind of rub it around. And I'll do this with all of them. Now I put it on pretty liberally too. Give it, give it a lot. Give it, you know, you definitely want to get them covered up. Okay guys, so I got my elk ribs here all covered up in the dry rub. And my oil is hot. Maybe a little much, I'll turn it down just a bit, but it's good to go right now. The trick to a good braise, through my many times practicing this, um, is to get good hot oil. And when you put your ribs in, you really want it to get a good brown on the outside of the meat first. So put them in. Get them going. I got two pans here. They still barely fit in these damn things. So, get that, get them in, let them sit, get a good brown on each side, give them a flip, brown the other side, and then uh, we'll get to the next part. Okay. They're starting to get a good brown. I just flipped them. They're looking pretty good. Now, as you know, wild game ribs are not thick like pork ribs, so you gotta be careful when you're doing the brining, or sorry, braising, that you don't overcook them right away in the oil. But at the same time, you wanna get them nice and nice and brown. Get, the, get them seared in and all that, that dry rub seared on in the oil. That 
is key. But they are nice and brown, ready for the next part of the braise. Now, you can call me crazy. A lot of people say that might be not be the best idea, but I like to have the meat completely thawed. But because of the bones, I like to try and do this while the inside of the bone is still a little frozen, or what I think is still a little frozen. That way when you get this good brown on there and that's seared in, and it seals it all in as it cooks during the rest of the stage of the braising, it's like locking, it locked in that moisture and it's just, I feel it makes them much more tender. But next part of the braise is, I'm gonna take my pans here, kind of take them off the heat, just for a second. And I know a lot of people who do this in different things. This isn't the only way to do this. You can do it with whatever, but I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Some people use apple juice, some people like to add beer. There's many different ways, and I've had it, and it's, it's good. You can do it however you want. This is just to get you started. So like I said, I'm gonna add just a little bit of water in here. Gotta be careful, because it's gonna splash that hot oil. Now, I do it just so it does, it's not even covering the meat, really. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit, put the lid on, and these things are going to pretty much just sit and cook in this water and, and everything. And this is what's going to make them real tender. Turn that down to four also. Now, with the elk ribs, they're a bit bigger, but two hours at least. Two hours. Okay, guys, while the ribs are braising on the stove, um, I looked up a little deal online. Um, I've always been interested in, in doing like mopping while we grill. So I looked up a, a good mop for, for ribs, and uh, it just calls for apple cider vinegar, just straight from the store, some yellow mustard, and salt, just plain salt. So I'm going to use a little ball mason jar here. It's got nice little increments on it, little increments there, so measure out my ingredients. But basically it's just a cup of apple cider vinegar. Now this is important. Add the apple cider vinegar first. Trust me, you'll see why. So there it is, one cup of apple cider vinegar. Now it says a quarter cup of mustard. This is why you added the apple cider vinegar first. Was because now all you gotta do is fill it up until it hits the quarter mark. Right up there. And boom. Quarter cup of mustard. That was easy, instead of trying to measure out an actual quarter cup of mustard because it doesn't lay flat like a liquid, you know, so it would be hard to measure. And then it's just a tablespoon of salt. That's all. Just a tablespoon of salt there. So we'll get the tablespoon of salt. And here's my little measure. mix that all in. I'm sorry, teaspoon. Teaspoon of salt, guys. Just a teaspoon. But anyways, grab our whisk here if I can find it. Got a lot of stuff going on here. Get our whisk, fits perfectly down the mason jar, and just kind of whisk that up, just make it all blended real well. And then cover it up. I got the lid because it's a mason jar. You could just, you know, do saran wrap or whatever. Just cover it up, put it in the fridge, and just let it sit for a while. Alright, so uh, ribs have been braising about 
45 minutes now. Just give them a quick check. Kind of flip them periodically, but uh, don't really need to do too much to them. The biggest thing you want to make sure is that you don't steam all your water away. You want to keep keep a good amount of water in there, keep it relatively con constant. That way you don't dry them out and they don't just sit in there and cook. So, all right. So the ribs are done braising. Um, we got our mop sauce here. We're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and get them out of the pot. I'm going to sprinkle them with a little bit more of the rub, just that way when we get them on the grill, it gets a little more caramelization. But uh, the grill's nice and hot. Get these out of the pot and uh, get these things going. Got these a little bit more dry rub. Got the grill nice and hot here. Got my little charcoal grill here. You guys like that? Put these down. We're going to put them down meat side first. Put them down on there. Right over the flame. We want high heat. Focus on high heat. Then we got our mop sauce here. Just a brush here. Set aside to always use it for food stuff. Gonna mop up these ribs real good. Just mop them up. let those go just for a few minutes. We're going to let those go just for a few minutes to uh, get a nice char on it. That's all we're trying to do is get a little char, a little caramelization. Not all the cooking's already been done. We're just, just going for that caramelization. These things have been going just a couple minutes. I'm going to do a flip on them. Oh yeah. Hit these real fast. Give them a flip. Go ahead and hit these with some more mop. Really add this on. The grill's still nice and hot. Get those over the heat. There we go. Let those go for a few more minutes and then... Uh... Alright, there it is guys. Got the elk ribs, ribs off the grill, so next time, save your elk ribs or deer ribs or anything and try this out or try out another recipe and always keep experimenting with your game. You'd be surprised what kind of good stuff you could find. I mean, bone just falls right off. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, keep up with us. Thanks for watching.